if it was up to me, I would not have my money, my gold in a safety deposit box. Right. I'd have it stored somewhere, someplace where they don't know where it is and they can't get it because they're going to clamp down so hard. We are in the greatest depression. Something is going on now of which the consequences have never, never, never been seen before. You cannot put billions of people out of work and not expect this thing to explode in a way that we have no concept of at all. Chief, Chief market, market analyst, analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the crisis that everybody now knows that we are walking through. And today I have a very, very special guest on Coffee with Lynette, Gerald Salente, founder of Trends Research Institute since 1980. He has absolutely earned his reputation as the most trusted trend forecaster. And in fact, the New York Post even said that if Nostradamus were alive today, he'd have a hard time keeping up with Gerald Salente. His motto is think for yourself, which is something that we here at ITM absolutely embrace completely. And, and as, as you'll see, he, he does, does not mince words. As, as he observes and analyzes the current events that form those future trends. trends. Most, Most important, important, he is a political atheist, atheist but, but he, he is, is also a teacher, teacher an author, and absolutely a fighter. My, my friend, friend Gerald, Gerald, it is so, so good to see you today. today. Thank, Thank you for coming. coming. Ah, thank you so much for having me on, Lynette, and thank you for the kind words. Oh, it's, oh, it's my, my pleasure. pleasure. So, so you had said before we had come on that you were heartbroken. heartbroken. Could, Could you, you elaborate, elaborate on that? that? Yeah, I'm heartbroken because of the consequences that we're all going to suffer through as a result of all of these uh, government shutdowns around the world. It's not only the United States where you have some 3 billion people in lockdown out of a, out of a global population of 7.7 .7 billion people. This is unprecedented in world history. And these politicians are doing the same exact thing like they do when they get us into war. Uh, we're going to start the Afghan war. How are we going to end? What's the exit strategy? I don't have to tell you what the exit strategy is. I'm the president of the United States. Who the hell are you? You're just a little surf. Go fight. Go die. Hey, how about the, Afghan, the Iraq war? What's the exit strategy? We don't have one. Don't you know who I am? I'm George W. Bush, the little Bush born on third base and thought he had a home run with an IQ that's uh, probably around 80. But we're going to have no exit strategy with that, no exit strategy with the consequences of governors, presidents, prime ministers, and chancellors closing down entire economies. Yeah. How are people going to pay their rent? How are they going to pay their mortgages? How are they going to pay their bills? How are they going to pay their taxes? How are they going to feed themselves? How are they going to feed them chil their children? You think you have a homeless crisis now? Haven't seen anything. Yeah. Why are people going out and buying all those guns? Very simple. We're going to see a crime wave like you can't imagine here in New York. You know what the biggest crime now is? Stealing cars. Wow. That's right. People are freaking out so much, they're running out of the city. Even the, even the, the, the lowest of the lowest. By the way, they're coming up to where we are, Kingston, New York, and this whole Hudson Valley. Now, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Yeah. You're going to see crime levels off the charts. The, the politicians, again, in the restaurant business, you well know, the margins are paper thin. Even in good times, you're just doing okay. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many businesses are not going to open again? I can't cut your hair. I can't serve your food. I got orders from the governor. I'll tell, he tells us what to do. These politicians are all telling us what to do. You know why? 
because they're little low-life pieces of crap that don't have to worry about getting paid. They steal our money in the name of taxes. They're not, if, if little Andy Cuomo and all the rest weren't going to get any money coming in, you think that they would close everything down? No. And do you know what these little low lives do in New York? We have essential businesses. Go back. <laughs> what are the essential businesses? Well, go back to the Great Depression because yeah. we are now, we are now in the greatest depression, even worse than then. Mm -hmm. What was one of the first things FDR did? They lifted prohibition. How come? The same low lives that put it on, now they're taking it off. You know why? We want your tax money. We're going to tax the hell out of this booze that should cost you probably about 80% of what you should be buying it for because we want the money. They're doing the same thing now. They allow liquor stores to be open. That's an essential business because we can get all the money. They allow the same low lives, the same dirty, slimy crap, the repulsivekins and the democraps that put tens of millions of people in jail for smoking a joint and then legalize it because we could get high taxes from it. You could, cannabis is okay to sell too in New York State and another number of other states. And they're doing very well too. What? They're doing well these days from what I hear. Exactly. So the politicians, these slimy low life people who never worked a day in their life, like little Andy Cuomo, who renames the bridge after his daddy, a daddy's boy with a very arrogant attitude. Another guy born on third base and thought he had a home run, like his little brother over there on CNN, the Cartoon News Network, with these arrogant attitudes. I used to know him when I used to do all the media. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Oh, good. How's your brother? Oh, good. How's your father? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They used to bring him around with two aides, and he was talking about sports and pop culture. All right? So what I'm saying is the politicians have not looked at all of the consequences of what they've caused. And the reason why they haven't looked at the consequences, by their deeds you shall know them. Show me one, 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 one thing that any, any government in the United States, from your state down to your village, to the, to the government at the top, has done anything intelligent in our lifetimes that has improved our lives. I, I can't. I can't even show you one, but I do have a question because they've been taking us in the direction of universal basic income since that divide between the haves and the have-nots have been exploding. So would this be a good excuse with the coronavirus and sending checks to everybody that they can spend? Because I think, uh, I think uh, Pal just said that on the other side of this, there's going to be a boom time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Powell said it. He's a brilliant guy. Like that other wag... That jerk, that Bernanke, did you hear him come out the other day? This oh, is like yeah. a snowstorm. Everybody should listen exactly. to Bernanke. This guy has a perfect track record. It's in our magazine, the Trends Journal. When it happened, he was saying, there's not going to be any recession in 2007 or 2008. Yep. Yep. Oh, the real estate market? No, you're not going to see a global decline in the real estate market. Why would any thinking individual listen to these low-life pieces of garbage and crap that call everything wrong all the time. But I wonder if there is an, an agenda here to move us along to what they want in that sharing economy, those gig workers are really suffering like you indicated. I don't think there's a, the, to us, the, the, the feature story in the Trends Journal this, this week, from dirty cash to digital trash. Yes, yes. That's the agenda. They're pumping all this money into there that isn't worth anything. Now they're going to come up in the, the global. They've been, this has been planned on for, and this is not a conspiracy theory. The facts are there. They've been planning digital currencies. Yes. This is going to give them an excuse to do it. So yes. now they'll do away with the dollar, they'll do away with the yuan, they'll do away with the euro, they'll do away with the real, they'll do away with the lira, they'll do away, do away, do away. Now we got digital. 
Now we got digital. All that other stuff isn't worth anything. That's the way we see it. Absolutely. So when you're looking at that and you're looking at the digital currency, the challenge that they have are the level of unbanked or underbanked. Um, I think there was a, a, a FDIC report recently that said, uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Uh, six and a half percent of U.S. households are unbanked, meaning that no one in the household had a checking or savings account. Additional, 18.7% of U.S. households were underbanked, meaning that they had an account at an, I love this one, insured <laughs> institution, but also obtained financial products or services outside the banking system, like, uh, oh, those check cashing places, etc. So how are they going to get all those that are unbanked and underbanked into the system to go digital? They'll make up laws to do it. They'll do anything that they want. They'll create stuff. Again, you know, this is the beginning. They're, they're making it up as they're going along. And by the way, you know, I, 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 believe, I, I believe that gold prices are going to skyrocket way, way above $2,000 an ounce. And I also believe that they're going to confiscate it. Yes, they're I do to, too. And you can see, by the way, the governments are taking action now, clamping down on people. You're not allowed to go outside. And this, yeah. is all, this isn't only America, it's all around. Yeah. And by the way, vitamin D from the doctors that I know is very good in helping you beat this kind of disease. But now you're locked in your house you can't get any vitamin D. So what I'm saying is you can see the clampdown that governments are taking now. And I believe there's going to be a, come a time, and when all my friends ask me, I don't give political advice, uh, uh, financial advice, I tell them if it was up to me, I would not have my money, my gold in a safety deposit box. Right. I'd have it s stored somewhere, someplace, where they don't know where it is and they can't get it. Because they're going to clamp down so hard we are in the greatest depression. Something is going on now of which the consequences have never, never, never been seen before. You cannot put billions of people out of work and not expect this thing to explode in a way that we have no concept of at all. Right. They think that they're going to flick a switch and all of a sudden everything is just going to be back to the way that it was. But we've, we're sitting on piles of debt. I mean... Look, I'm definitely not a conspiracy theorist, but when you're looking at the debt bubble that already popped, and by the way, we now have interest rates on the one and three month T-bills here that are negative. Yep. I mean, what does that tell you? All right, so let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to September 17th, 2019. All of a sudden, everybody starts learning, that's interested in it, learning about the repo markets. And the Federal Reserve coming in and pumping in hundreds of billions of dollars a week. And from September 17th to January, eh, about 20th, they pump in how much? Seven trillion dollars. The markets are going down. And then, they start pumping them up again. We were already in a decline long before the coronavirus hit. Yes, we were. So now, when I hear from a Powell or some hedge fund guy on CNBC telling us it's going to snap back, what the hell are you talking about? The thing was going down before. You only propped up the equity markets with all these trillions of dollars you pumped into it. And by the way, they pumped in secretly between 2007 to 2010, 29 trillion dollars, as you well know, the Federal Reserve, to the banks. To the banks. To the banks. Not to the people. 
So what they're doing with this so-called bailout thing is they're throwing pennies to the people. And again, you know, I can't stand this Bernie Sanders, you know. And they say, oh, if he gets elected, we'll have socialism. Yeah, now you have <laughs> socialism for the rich. Yeah. And capitalism for the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. I, I What I love, did you see the, uh, let's see, where's that? Here it is. Uh, Mario Draghi, whatever it takes, comes out and says, the challenge we face is how to act with sufficient strength <laughs> and speed to prevent the recession from morphing into a prolonged depression. And it's already clear that the answer must involve significant increase in public debt the loss of income incurred by the private sector and any debt raised to fill the gap, but must eventually be absorbed. This is the part that I love. I don't love it really, but I'll say it. Must eventually be absorbed wholly or in part on a government balance sheet. Much higher public debt levels will become a permanent feature of our economies and will be accompanied by private debt cancellation. Now, is he talking about, I don't know, student loans or credit card debts or auto loans, or is he talking about private corporate debt cancellations? You know, when you go over each thing that he said, I'm saying, who the hell is this guy bullsh BSing? I can't guy be exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to take, this is what I was saying. They're going to get rid of the euro. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're going to come out with a new currency. Oh, yeah, we could build up all the debt we want. We're going to get... Hey, Mario. Hey, little Mario. Oh, by the way, Mario, you know who he was? A Goldman Sachs boy. Before he... Uh, he was the, re the European head of the Goldman Sachs gang before they put him into the... Uh, into ECB. the ECB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Mario Draghi. Mario, a piece of crap Draghi, that guy. Yeah, oh, how much did they pump in? What, about 2.7 uh, trillion euros? And Europe never got really out of the recession. Italy never got out of it. No. And now what are they going to do? Oh, they're only at zero, minus 0.5% 0 interest rates now. And they're pumping more money in. They're making this crap up as they go along. And they say it with all these arrogant attitudes behind it. And so what I'm saying to you is, yes, they're going to throw the people pennies, but they're going to come up with a new currency. Yes. And that's why, again, gold is the last safe haven asset. Who in their right mind would be a, buy a government bond with a negative yield? It, negative yields make no sense. They're illogical unless you're loaning money to your children. Then it could make some sense. <laughs> but, right, but other than that, why would you pay somebody to borrow your hard-earned money knowing they can't pay you back? Yeah. Please. And you got it. Right. And you also said before about the debt bubble. What, it's over $250 trillion. And it's way beyond that. It's way beyond that. Now, now think about it. The airline industry, the tourist industry, the restaurant industry, uh, the retail industry, auto industry, name the industry down the toilet. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, oh by the way, automobiles, antique automobiles, artwork, um, fashion, one product after another, Costs are going to go way, 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 way down. You're going to be able to buy this stuff for pennies on the dollar, but it's going to cost you more because they're going to come out with a new currency. And but isn't that the point of gold? That's right? the point of gold. It, you know, you made a really good point where going back to the 30s, the Great Depression, and now here we are in the 20s, the greatest depression. But that was the beginning of this. That was the kickoff of this fiat money experiment. This is the end of this particular fiat money experiment. Perfectly said. And so, yeah, it has to be worth, worse. 
And, uh, you know, we've read a lot from the IMF about the, you know, opening up the SDR to the normal people. We've read a lot. I've been reading recently also about the Fed coin, where individuals would have access directly to central banks. Balance, well, not their balance sheet, but central bank button pushing money. I mean, I don't know. What, what do you make of that? Again, you know, it's, it's our cover story, the Trends Journal, from dirty cash to digital trash. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're going. And now let's take a, again, I told you before I was heartbroken because I know the suffering that people are going to go through. I already have tenants over here that can't pay my rent. Yeah. They're, they're going out of business. Places, they're going out of business. So now we're going to see a homeless crisis like you cannot imagine. Yeah. We're going to see crime levels far beyond what anyone could imagine. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Yeah. And they're going to be losing it big time. One of our top trends for 2020 was new world disorder. Around the world, France, Hong Kong, Chile, Colombia, Peru, uh, Algeria, South Africa, one country after another, India, people protesting, protesting, protesting because of the declining standard of living, can't, mm -hmm. have base, can't meet basic living standards. Now all those are closed down because you're not allowed to go out in the street. Things were going down then. Think how bad they're going to go now. So, how about Argentina? Uh, they're only in three years of recession. Oh, how about all these commodity-rich countries right. that depend on their commodities to bring them in income? Like oh, as, oil? As, yeah, oils. What's oil now around? About $27 a barrel for Brent crude? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. something in there. It's yeah. in the 20s for sure. Yeah, and, and it's 18-year lows. And, and what does Saudi Arabia need it at? Oh, around $82. Oh, well, how about Russia? Oh, about $42. And now, go, how about Venezuela? They're already down and out. How about Nigeria? How about Algeria? How about all these other oil-producing countries that are already down? Mm -hmm. How about Chile? Rich in copper. Copper prices weighed down. One commodity price way down after another. You're going to see, oh, you think you got a refugee and a migrant crisis now? Haven't seen anything yet as people try to do anything they can to escape the violence, the corruption, the crime, and the poverty of nations around the world. Brought to you by the chancellors, the prime ministers, the presidents, all the way down to the mayors and village clerks. Do you think that that could justify, I mean, you know, everybody's been watching what China's been doing in a full surveillance economy and definitely a dictatorship. And, you know, do you think that that could be a, a, a kind of a vision of what we, they will try to justify elsewhere? They're doing it already. Here? And, that, and that's what digital money is. Mm -hmm. So now digital money, you get a tip, you got to report it. You go to the barber, the hairstylist, you give them, you know, whatever it costs. Yeah, they don't report all of it. Now they got to report every penny. They, mm -hmm. Every penny that you spent, where you spent it, how you spent it. They know exactly what it is. And now they're doing it all already. They're doing it in Israel. They're doing it, you know, they, they're surveilling everybody so that yeah. we know who you are, what diseases you have, and, and where you're walking and where you're going. They're going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Again, let's look at the numbers. As we're speaking, about 30,000 people have died from coronavirus in the world out of a population of 7.7 .7 billion people. Mm -hmm. Last year, over 650,000 people died of the flu globally. In 2017, 2018, uh, about 70, 80,000 people died in America of the flu. Now the headline in Drudge 80,000 may die from coronavirus. Okay, a bad flu. You're going to close down the entire global economy for that? The entire United States? You're closing down the whole country? You're putting all these people... Dead. Businesses are not going to bounce back. Yeah. They're not going to come back. So the many small people... ones aren't. We're going to no. consolidate. Right. And then, the, and then when you look again at the money that the, they're giving us, the, the, 
the, uh, with this bailout bill, it's socialism again. It's socialism for the rich. Oh, I'm the airline industry. I want $60 billion. They screw you. I don't get a pro your, your profits when you're making money. You're not a public service. Why should you get the money? In Why fact, they the ship money? out their profits. That's the I challenge know. that I've had. You know, the banks. Oh, okay. Well, you passed this little test. Now you can send all your profits, all your money out of the system. Nothing left for a rainy day. You're going to see big banks crash on this. There's you no have. bailing this thing out. This is, this no is the greatest the depression. Again, go back to 1930. There were 2 billion people on the planet. 2 billion. We've added 5.7 billion people in 90 years. Mm -hmm. You're already seeing, as I said, the new world disorder, people leaving countries, revolutions, demonstrations, riots going on everywhere, trying to escape the violence, the corruption, the, the poverty. Now, now the whole economy down, it, it's, it's, now you got 7.7 .7 billion people and 3 billion are already locked down, out of work, out of jobs. How's it going to come back? Oh, I'm a government official. I'll tell you how. Yeah, shove it. Right. Well, they don't tell you how. No, they don't. <laughs> no exit strategy from the wars. No exit strategy from an entire close down of the system. Well, you know, you had said that you forecast the destruction of careers, family, and lives because of government-mandated shutdown that ultimately will do more damage than the virus itself. I mean, look, we knew that the old system was absolutely dead. It was dead. They had no interest rates, and they had the highest debt levels in the world, so they had no tools left. I'm just wondering if this, and, we, and they'd been talking about a reset of the system. I think this can really justify that reset, especially if people are scared enough. And I'll be honest with you, I was really glad that I've been listening to your interviews because you've kind of, believe it or not, but sort of calmed me, me down because I was kind of buying into this coronavirus thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still going to be very cautious, yeah, but it is course. about maintaining your health, right? making sure that your body can withstand any kind of exposure. So it's what you eat and it's what you, you know, and your exercise, but they've been destroying the food for years in the name of big business. So how much nutrition are people really getting to fight this as well? And, and again, we did a whole article in the Trends Journal about that, all the crap that people are buying as they're being locked down. Right. You know, SpaghettiOs, Campbell's soup, oh, great, you know, wonderful. Keep eating it. And again, oh. look at the shape, you look, look at the, you know, the, the, the problems already in the nation of what people are eating. So, no, the people are going to buy it. The majority are going to buy it, but there's a vast minority that's building that I believe is going to be bigger than the majority that are buying it now when things really go down bad. And again, you mentioned food. Yeah, it's okay to put poison, all this preservatives. You like those colors they put in your food? How about the pesticides? How about all the chemicals? You into GMOs? Hey, how about all that crap they're pumping into the? Oh, that fracking that's poisoning in all the water. Oh, long before the fracking was poisoning. Hey, you still drinking that water in Flint? You look at the poison in our food, in our water, in the earth, mm -hmm. in the air, and you're worried about coronavirus. You can't eat most of this stuff without killing yourself. Exactly. Which, you know, I mean, the people that have succumbed to the coronavirus had a compromised system on exactly. some levels. And, and the food that we eat certainly opens that up because it creates a really acid environment in your body. So that's easy for disease to take over. And of course, that's good for big pharma. Yep. And a matter of fact, to me, one of the most affordable health care uh, people to go to in the system. And again, as you said, think for yourself is the my motto. Yes. Is the our chiropractors. I go to my chiropractor, Dr. Skolnick, and he gives me all these different things to take in, in Immuneplex, all these different things to take in building my system up. 
to, mm -hmm. to stay healthy in the event of this happening. So that's the kind of things I do. I do natural healing the best I can. Will it work? I don't know. I'm going to give it every shot I can. But guess what? You're not going to put one of those vaccinations into me. Ain't going to have that. Right. So I believe in natural healing. And by the way, I also have an honorary doctorate from the National University of Health Sciences uh, for the work that I've done in the field over the years. And the first book I worked on actually was natural healing back in the 80s. So that I believe in the natural healing route. Again, they have everybody locked up. Just before I went on the air, it's a beautiful day here for a march, and I was sitting out in the sun because vitamin D is very good for you to help fight these things. But now you got to stay in your house. You go outside, you're going to get arrested. That's the stupid people telling us this crap. Right. Just like they marched to Mussolini, they're doing it again in Italy. Just like they hired Hitler, they're doing it again. In Germany, two people can't be on the street at the same time together. They brought out the Bundeswehr again. It's going on. Every, you know how many, what, how many deaths are in Germany? I think about, about 80 million people, about 250 people died. And again, they're mostly elderly and already compromised health-wise. And people are following the orders. Salute to Stalin. Obey Macron. You know, what Merkel says, I follow. Well, you know, but in the meantime, yesterday, the Dow soars 11%, best day in 87 years. I mean, on the same page, India orders its 1.3 billion people to stay home. So, I mean, it's insanity out there. We know, I, what my concern is, is, yeah, I mean, they print this money, all of the new Fed programs and the government programs on top of it, they're all basically unlimited, but that's a button push that taxpayers have to pay back. So it's not like it's government money that they have that they've saved. It's a new taxpayer funded Monday money that they push the button on. But it, it's, it's crazy when you look at what's happening in here. I'm concerned that people don't get fooled because the stock market is going up. Oh, I should keep my money in there. They're trying really hard not to close the stock exchanges because then they would know. And so no, the whole the markets are totally fabricated. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pumping money in all the time. Oh, they have a thing called a plunge protection team. Isn't that a nice name for rigging the markets? Yeah. A plunge protection. He's, you know, oh, yeah. We, we, and again, where's the money going from the Fed? It's going to the trading houses. That's exactly. where the money's going. So they're artificially propping it up. You, yeah. Again, we've been writing about this in the, in the Trends Journal Weekly before all this started coming down. There were massive riots going on in India. Their economy's been in a slump. I think it was like seven consecutive quarters down. And there were riots all over the place. You know how many people... Population of 1.37 billion people. 14. Indians are dying every all over the place, and the malnutrition right. built everywhere. 1.3 million are dying a year from air pollution. They're doing this to clamp down on. They just clamped down in South Africa. Same thing. Four people died in South Africa. South Africa had riots going on. The energy system is down. Problem after problem after problem. Going into a deep, 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 deep recession already. They closed down the place. The governments are doing this to take total control of the people. I, I, we are I going really to see revolutions. So. I, I want, this is very important. I've been saying this for a number of years. Currency wars, trade wars... Depression, world wars. History is repeating itself. Yeah. We are now the greatest depression. We had the currency wars, the trade wars, Great Depression, world wars. If people don't stand up and fight for their freedom that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights gives us, these same sick people that are ruining our lives now are going to start the Third World War. You're civil wars throughout the globe. 
and they're going to make up the story of what I and this world war when they asked Albert Einstein what weapons will be used to fight the third world war he said I don't know but I know they'll be using sticks and stones I'm telling you it's a it's a really it's a scary thought but there's some optimism because of the work that you do, that I do, that many others do to create this global community so that we can see through the garbage that the governments are doing so that they, and central banks, so that they can stay in power. I mean, central banks have been buying gold hand over fist since 2008. Yeah, last yeah, they bought what more than they had in fifty years or something. Uh, it was something it's a ridiculous number exactly. that they they bought last year. A whole uh, and again, I say this because there is now an opportunity for a new direction. Yes, it's not a to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Samuel Adams. There are enough of us now to turn this around if we unite in the names of liberty, love, joy, and beauty, the, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution, stand up and fight for those, we could then have a far greater future than even the one that happened before this coronavirus, because it was due to happen anyway. To happen. So this could be a new path for the greatest times of America. That's really what I want people to understand. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because everything does look nasty and doom and gloomy, but there is, there is hope if we come together. We can make a difference. If, if we come together, if, if we come together, the names I said, liberty, love, joy and beauty, freedom and, and peace, we could change this whole course because these psychopaths don't know what those words mean. Joy? Oh, yeah, look at Andy Cuomo. Now, there's a face filled with joy, yeah, right? Look at these clowns. Look at them. Look at a Bernanke. Look at a Powell. Look at these disgusting-looking human beings. So we could beat them on these levels because they don't know how to do that. All they do is live in fear and terror. These cats don't know what a good time is if they ever would ever feel it or know it. They've been tight all their lives, and that's all they keep selling is, be tight like me, be tight like me. Well, this has been, we've covered a lot of topics, and I, I want to leave it on that positive note, because if we do come together, you know, how can they find more of your work at the Trends Research Institute? Can you, anything else that you really want to impart before we close for today? Yes, the Trends Journal, our weekly magazine. There's nothing like it in the, in the world. You know, we tell you what's going on, what it means, and what's next. And we went from a quarterly to a monthly to a weekly. Weekly. And that's how, that's because events are changing so fast. And the, the amount of information in it and what we cover, I, you know, there's nothing else like it. And it's only $129 a year. And we do Trends in the News broadcasts as well and trend alerts when we, when we have to send them out. So it's trendsjournal.com. Yes, we have all of the links and how you can see more of Gerald's work. And it, it, it's so worth it. It just, it's worth so much more than $129 a year for sure. Well, well we keep you. it at that level so a lot of people could subscribe to it. If we wanted mm -hmm. to only hit the higher elements, we would, it would be in the seven dollars $800 range. But we didn't do that. For, so we want to make it available to everyone that we can. It's only pennies really a day. Exactly. And we need to know what's coming so that we can be prepared for what's coming. And we need to come together to help each other through this so that we yes. can have a beautiful future for our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children. We, we have a choice. We have a choice. And that's what people need to really understand and hold on to. So thank you so much. This has been wonderful. We need to Amen. do it thank again. You. And when we're when you're out of lockdown, because we're not in lockdown yet, 
But, you know, we need to really come together physically again. Either I'll come to New York or I you'll come to Phoenix. All right. Thank you so much. And as Thank always. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you oh, for you. I can say that to you too, Gerald. So keep in mind that financial shields are made of physical gold and silver in your possession. And until next it. we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.